Whenever you watch a movie, a show, or even an ad, what you see on the screen and what you hear are often totally separate. A simple scene could have dozens of sound effects that are layered together to create the perfect soundscape that matches to the picture. Now, if doing something like that feels overwhelming or sounds complicated, don't worry, because that is what this course is all about. Hi, my name is Dave Bodie for Envato, and in this course, you are going to learn how to do sound design in Reaper. You are going to learn the basics of taking a promo for a sports drink and adding dozens and dozens of sound effects so that it sounds like this. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love. Hydro water, fuel your passion. To start, you will learn how I like to have Reaper laid out for sound design, and you will learn how to install an extension called Color Palette, which makes coloring your projects super easy. Next, you will learn how to import video, do a quick music edit, and get the voiceover roughly timed to the video. After that, it's sound effects, sound effects, sound effects. You will be learning how to layer many sound effects together to align perfectly with the visuals. Throughout this process, you will learn how to do some basic EQ and compression for some of the sounds as well as volume and EQ automation using envelopes. Finally, you will learn how to process the voiceover, mix the music, and balance the sound effects using sidechain compression and automation. The voiceover for this project comes from Jonathan Oldham, an actor and voiceover artist with a deep Australian sound. Jonathan has graciously given permission for you to download his raw voiceover files so that you can follow along. The sound effects in music come from Envato Elements. With Envato Elements, you get access to millions, that's right, millions of creative digital assets for one low price. I'm talking about stock footage, motion graphics templates, music, photos, vector graphics, fonts, sound effects, after effects templates, and so much more. A single subscription gives you access to everything you need to create great projects. See for yourself at elements.envato.com. This sound design for Reaper course is very much a real world example of what I would do if I was actually doing sound design for a project just like this. As such, I will be using my favorite third party effects like Nova GE and Fur Comp 2, but you can follow along with the free versions of both of those which I'm gonna talk about in those lessons. I'll also be moving very, very fast at times. And sometimes I'll go back and change my mind about how I have things set or the way the sound effects sound. Because just like in a real project, sometimes I think something might sound good and then a few minutes later, I won't like it, I'll go back and change my mind. Now, I'm gonna show you that entire process because I think it's important to see that it's okay to make mistakes and go back and change your mind. By the end of this course, you will have learned a ton about adding and layering sound effects using EQ and compression, automation, and much more. To get started, check out the next lesson where you are going to learn how to set up Reaper for sound design. In this lesson, you're going to learn how I like to have my Reaper set up for sound design projects and you're gonna learn how to install some custom scripts and extensions. So this is generally how I like to work in Reaper, whether it's for music, video, sound design, voiceover, audiobooks, podcasts, whatever. Generally, I don't use the mixer control panel. Instead, I like to have a lot of real estate right here in the center of the screen in the arrange view where I can move items around and I can slide and edit. To me, that makes a lot more sense than having the mixer around all of the time. I also want to show you this really fabulous script called Color Palette. When I'm doing sound design projects, or really any kind of projects in Reaper, I like to colorize my tracks, my media items, to make things easier to identify visually. Now, you can colorize things 
with the built-in tools in Reaper. But honestly, that is a little bit clunky. And this free script called Color Palette makes colorizing all of those things, including tracks, media items, takes, take markers, markers, regions, markers and regions, and more a lot easier. Let me show you. If I make a bunch of tracks here and I make a bunch of items, you can select your tracks and just colorize them just like that. You can randomize the color based on your color palette right here. You can select your items and whatever you select shows up right here. And then you can colorize those or make those any kind of random color you want. You can go into the settings and you can adjust the colors however you want or the hue. It's a fabulous tool for colorizing all kinds of things in Reaper and it's free and it's pretty easy to set up, which I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to walk you through installing Repack and Color Palette really quickly in this fresh install of Reaper. So to get started, you're going to want to go to repack.com and download Repack for your operating system. For me, that's going to be Windows 64 bit. You can make a donation if you want to. And then it gives you the instructions for install right here. If we hop back to Reaper, go to options and then show Reaper resource path in Explorer slash finder. That's going to pop up right here. And we are looking for the user plugins folder. And you want to go to your downloads and you want to drag Repack into that user plugins folder and then restart Reaper. When you restart Reaper, it's going to pop up and show you all the repositories. You can add more if you want. I'm just going to click OK. And then if you click on extensions, Repack, browse packages, that's going to download some things. And then it's going to open up this browse packages dialog right here. And you can search for color palette. It's right here. If you right click on it, you can install and then click OK. It's going to install that. And then you click OK. Now, when you try and run color palette, it's going to prompt you to install a few more things. Now, to make it easier, what I'm going to do is right click in the menu here, choose customize toolbar, and I'm just going to make a button for color palette really quickly. So I'm going to insert an action. I'm going to search for color palette. It's right there. I'm going to select and close and then right click, change the icon. And I'm going to select that icon right there, double click, and then I'll just close that. And that shows up right here. And now when I click to launch color palette, it's going to prompt me to install a few more things that it needs to work. One of those is called SWS extensions. So I'm going to jump back to my web browser here. And this is SWS extensions. So you're going to need to download SWS extensions. Again, select your operating system of choice. Download x64. I'm going to run that right from here. I'm going to install that. And I'm going to point this to where I have Reaper installed. For me, that's going to be a custom location because I'm using a portable install of Reaper so that I can show you how to install this. And I'm going to install. But first, I need to close Reaper. There we go. It's closed. Install. It's going to take just a second. Very good. I'm going to relaunch Reaper one more time. I'll launch color palette. It says, please install Realm GUI. Click OK. The nice thing about this is it just prompts you and brings up the next script to install, or in this case, the extension. Click Install. Click OK. It says the newly installed files won't be loaded until Reaper is restarted. OK, no problem. I'm going to close out of Reaper one more time, relaunch it. I'll launch Color Palette one more time. It needs one more thing to work. Here we go. Install. Click OK. Click OK. OK. Close it and then reinstall one final time. And this time, ta-da, we get Color Palette. That only took four minutes. All right, cool. So how I have Color Palette set up is a little bit different than the default. I like the vertical mod which you can see here looks like this. And then if you go into like the colors, you can change the, the hue and you can kind of change where the colors start. You can add more points to kind of tweak the colors that you're going to be using. I think this is really cool. There's other customizations that you can do with the size and the number of rows, but that's pretty much it. And now you have access to color palette and a ton of extra extensions here and scripts and effects. You can see right now I have 1,888 
packages available. These are things like effects, extensions, MIDI note names, project templates, scripts, themes, and more. It's really incredible, and you can find a lot of useful things in these packages. And on top of that, you can add other packages that give you access to other scripts and effects. Repack is really, really handy, and you should definitely check it out. All right, I'm back in my main install of Reaper, and I'll walk you through a few of the other things that I have set up that will be handy to know as we go forward. You'll see I have a few buttons missing here from my toolbar. I've just customized it a little bit and taken out things like undo, redo, project save, and a few other things. And you can change those right over here by selecting these items and removing them. You can also add whatever you want over there as well. Over on the right side of my screen, you can see I have the master mixer and that is docked over here. To get the master mixer docked over here on the right side of the screen, you go to view floating master mixer, and then you right click and then choose show in Docker. And then you can just grab this little tab here and you can dock this wherever you want. I dock it over here and then just slide this over. It's not a great use of space, but I do like to have the master mixer somewhere in my project where I can see it. The other option is if you have multiple monitors, you can just float this and then drag it like to another monitor, which you can't see, but I have three monitors in my space here. And so I could just drag it up to another monitor and place it there. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it over here. You also may see that I have a few effects here. These are my default mastering effects. They're nothing fancy. I'll show you those really quickly. I have a third party compressor called FurComp2. There's a free version called FurComp1. Right now it's not engaged, but I do use this from time to time. It's a fabulous compressor. I also have a limiter on my master mixer or master track or master bus, whatever you may call it. And I'm using TDR limiter number six GE. I also use this free loudness meter that comes with Reaper, it's called loudness meter. And what I generally do is right click on the effect here and then select show embedded UI in mixer control panel. And then when I close this, I can see the loudness meter and it's always available right over here. I think that's really handy just so I can keep an eye on the loudness of my project or individual tracks as I'm working in Reaper. And that's pretty much it. Any other customizations you will find out about on the way, and I'll talk about them in the context of the course. Coming up next, you're going to learn how to import video and get that all squared away in Reaper with project settings and the video window and more. So check that out coming up next. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to import your video and do some more project setup to make it optimal for sound design editing. So to get started, I'm going to import my video into Reaper. And to do that, I'm going to open up the Media Explorer, which you can do by coming up here to the menu, selecting View, and then Media Explorer. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control-Alt-X. At least, I think the keyboard shortcut is Control-Alt-X. Now, I want to make a quick note before I go any further, and that is, it's very possible that I have changed some keyboard shortcuts from their default. And so if there's any keyboard shortcut that I mention, like Control Alt X, for example, that doesn't do the thing that I'm telling you that it's supposed to do, it's very likely that I have changed the keyboard shortcut from the default at some point, and I've forgotten about it. Because I've been using Reaper, I think, for over a decade now, and it could be something that I changed like five years ago, and it's just kind of ingrained into my workflow. There shouldn't be too many of those because I don't change a lot of shortcuts specifically because I do tutorials, but sometimes I do. So if there's any keyboard shortcuts that I'm telling you is a thing and it's not a thing, I'll show you how to figure that out really quickly. You do that by jumping over to the actions list, which you can do by coming up to the menu, go to actions, show actions list. And let's say, for example, I did change the shortcut for the Media Explorer and you want to know what that is. Well, you could look it up in the menu, but if it's not something that's in one of these menus, you can just search for it here in the filter. So Media Explorer right here. This will show you what the shortcut actually is and you can change it right here as well. So 
You can select the shortcut, you can delete it, and then you can add a shortcut just like that, or you can add a different shortcut, whatever you want to do. That's how you change the shortcuts for the actions in Reaper. Now, like I said, I don't think that's going to happen, but it might, and I wanted to throw up a warning right now, just in case. So I'm going to navigate to where I have my video stored. For me, it's in my exports folder. For you, it's going to be somewhere in the downloaded project files linked in the description of this video. So this is the video that you are looking for. It's called Hydro Water Edit for Reaper version 4 titles. When you click on it in the Media Explorer, it is going to start playing. You can adjust the volume right here in case it's obnoxiously loud. You can also turn off autoplay right here if you want, although for sound effects, I generally think that it's more helpful to have that on. But it does become a little bit annoying when you're doing tutorials and you're talking and you accidentally play things under whatever you're saying. Anyway, you can turn that off right here. So I want to get this into my project. I'm going to just click and drag it right over here. And this is my video. You can see there's audio attached to it, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But right now you can't see anything. And that's because there's no kind of video viewer or video monitor open. But you can do that by coming up to the view menu and then selecting video. And check that out. There's the video. So what you can see and hear is this is not quite a finished product. This video is locked in terms of timing, but there is no voiceover or sound effects in the mix. The music's also pretty low. And that's because getting the music in the video aligned is kind of a multi-step process. So what I'll do is do a rough edit in my video editor with the music and the music is not very precisely timed, but I'll get a general idea of where the shots need to be, kind of timed with the music roughly. Then I'll export that out and I'll bring it into Reaper and do a very precise music edit, export that music edit out, bring it back into my video editor and align all of the shots to be right on the beat so I have a really nice punchy edit. And that's basically what you are seeing at this point. The music is pretty close. I don't know if it's super precise, but everything is aligning right to the beat. And so in the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to do a really quick music edit to make things sound really nice and to lock it into all these timed cuts. But for now, we need to do a couple more tweaks in Reaper to make sure that our frame rate is set up and our time base is set up. So if I jump over here to project settings, there are two things that I want to tweak. One of those is I want to make sure that the time base for items, envelopes, and markers is set to time. By default, this is set to beats, position, length, and rate. And when it's set to this option right here, when you change the tempo of your project, it time stretches all of your media items. And that's going to make you have a really bad day because that is not what you want. When you change the tempo of your project, when you're doing a music edit, it's because you want to align the grid to the music so that you can make really precise edits. And so time is the option that you want when you're doing that sort of thing. The other thing that you want to change is you want to set the frame rate to the frame rate of your project or whichever video that you have imported into Reaper. Now, if you don't know the frame rate of your video, you can right click and go to source properties. And you can see right here, video 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second. That's all you need to know. So now if we jump back into our project settings, I'm going to set this to 29.97 drop frame and that'll work fine. Click OK, and we are good to go. Now I'm going to pull the volume down on this track because I really don't need to hear the audio. It's just kind of for reference. And if I mute this, it's going to make the video disappear. So I can't mute it, but I don't want the audio to come through to the uh, master mix. I could also go into the routing and just turn off the master send channels, but turning it down is quick enough right here. The other thing that may be helpful is to make the grid line up to frames. Now, you may have to change the grid a few times depending on what you're doing, but I just want to show you how to do that. So if you come over here to the toolbar and you right click on the grid, you bring up the grid and snap settings and you can set this to frames. And because you just set in your project settings, 29.97 frames 
per second. Now when you click, it's going to align to the frames of this video, which is very handy for kind of figuring out exactly where the next clip starts, which will make editing sound effects and sound design like really precise. It's really great for adding markers and things like that, which you're going to see in an upcoming lesson. Now, I also want to point out that there is a keyboard shortcut for jumping to the next grid line, and that is control shift right and left arrow. It's either right or left. If you want to go forward, it's right. If you want to go backwards, it's left. Now, sometimes, and I haven't figured out exactly why, when you do this, sometimes it makes a really annoying kind of tape stop noise. I haven't exactly worked out why, but if this is happening for you, one thing that you can do is you can install a script that makes it a little bit easier to jump forward and back frames in your project. So if you come up to extensions, repack, browse packages, and you search for frame, there is a script by the author X-Ray, and the script will let you move edit cursor to the next frame. Now this is different than that keyboard shortcut that I just showed you, which is move to the next grid line, because if you change your grid, for example, if you set your grid back to quarter notes like that, and you use that keyboard shortcut, it's going to jump quarter notes, which obviously you can see there is not very effective for moving one frame forward or backwards. Now I have mapped that script that I just showed you by X-Ray M to my number pad, specifically the number pad four, and the number pad six. And that makes it really handy for jumping forward or backwards in time. Now that's pretty much it for getting the video set up. This video window here, you can move around. It's not docked. Although if you want to dock this, you can just grab the little tab here and you can dock it down here, or you can move it to the side or the top or, you know, wherever you want. You can also float it and you can move it to another monitor, which you can't see because you're only looking at one of my monitors here. But a lot of times I will move this up to another monitor and that makes it much more convenient to edit. Now, there's a weird thing in my system that when I drag this to one of my other monitors, it makes this really strange glitchy looking thing, but that's only until you play it and then it goes away. I'm going to leave my video window kind of floating here and I'm going to move it around to get it out of the way and resize it as I need to. There's a few more things that I want to show you really quick. Before we move on, one of those is you may have noticed that there is a volume knob above my media item. I think this is really handy for adjusting the volume of items in Reaper, and I'll show you how to set this up really quickly. If you go into the preferences, which is control P and you search for knob, it'll take you right to the right spot in the preferences and you can enable this volume knob right here. And once you do, when you click apply, that will show up above all of your media items, and that is really handy. There's a bunch of other things that you can enable or disable. I think the locked icon is enabled by default. Um, not locked is not enabled on my system, and I think that makes sense, but you can adjust these as you see fit. But I think you will find the volume knob very, very useful to use, especially when it comes to sound design. And speaking of locked, now that I have my video kind of set up here, what I want to do is right click on this media item and lock it. And this is because as I'm editing, it's not impossible to accidentally click a media item and move it inadvertently. And if you do, and then you continue to edit your sound effects and tweak things for another hour, you're going to have a sad day because you're going to realize that either the beginning of your project is all messed up or the end is at some point, or maybe the middle or some combination, I don't know. But if you don't want to inadvertently move your items, once you have them set where you want them, I would recommend that you just lock them and then you won't have a problem as you move forward and you build out a complex project. And I think we're going to have maybe 40 or 50 tracks in this project and a lot of different media items. And so for things like my video, my music and my voiceover, once I get those set, I will generally lock them. And you can unlock them by clicking this little icon right there. Super easy. Coming up in the next lesson, you are going to learn how to do a really quick music edit. Check that out coming up next.
In this lesson, you will learn how to do a quick music edit and figure out the tempo of the music track inside of Reaper. The next thing that I want to do is import my music. So again, I'm going to bring up the Media Explorer here, and I'm going to navigate to where I have the music for this project in the Assets folder, in the Music folder. And this is a track that I got from Envato Elements. It's called Epic Heroes in Hip Hop. It's got a great sound to it. I think it's going to work great for this project. So I'm going to add that to my project, just drag it in on a new track. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to do an edit here so that it matches what I've done in the video. In other words, if I go back to my video here and I turn the volume back up, I need this piano stuff at the beginning. And then right when it cuts to this close up of this person swimming here, I need the beat to drop. And then it pretty much stays big until the end of the video. So I need to do that edit now. And I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. The first thing that I like to do is figure out the tempo of this track. Now, if we go back to the Media Explorer and I select this track again, you'll see that it doesn't say the tempo in the file name. It doesn't say the tempo in the folder name when it got downloaded. It also doesn't say the tempo in the metadata. Reaper is guessing that it's 97.175, but that's not correct. So how do we do this? Well, there is a way to do it. You can kind of tap your foot to the beat and then tap that in over here to the BPM. That's one way that'll get you close. I wouldn't recommend that though. A better way is a little tedious, but it's pretty foolproof. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to turn off snapping by hitting Alt S on the keyboard. And what I want to do is find one measure of this song. I want to find the beat one of a measure and then beat one of another measure. And I'm going to pick right when the beat drops right here. So right here, is beat one of the second measure. I'll count that for you if you're not a musician. It's something like this. One, two, three, four, one. So on this second count of one right here, this is the start of the second measure of the music. And what I wanna do is I wanna zoom way in here and I'll drop a marker by hitting M on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna go to this first beat here, right here, and I'm going to drop another marker. So this represents one measure in musical time. And Reaper can figure out the tempo of a piece of music based on the length of one measure. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But that selection that I did right there with dropping these markers is not quite precise enough. What I want to do is zoom way in to this area here where this beat is happening again where this kind of kick drum sound is and i'll let you hear that so right there i'm going to turn that up a little bit more so this is where that second measure starts and this is kind of the beginning and you can kind of see that on the waveform here which is why i picked this louder section with the drums because generally the drums are pretty loud in the mix and they make a nice kind of bumpy transient although this is kind of a, a big fat sound here doesn't matter what I want to do is look at the very beginning of this beat and kind of analyze this waveform here. What I'm looking for is some kind of pattern that I can recognize on the first beat of the measure to the left of here, and that'll make more sense in just a minute. So you can see on this big spiky bit here, I have three little humps and then a dip and then two little humps. So I think what I'm going to do is aim for this dip here and hope that on the first beat of the previous measure, I can find something that looks very similar. So I'm just going to drag my marker right over here. You can see it's right in this little dippity area, kind of right there. Now, if I go back to my other marker, 
which I believe is two on the keyboard, but for me it's two on the number pad. I'm gonna look at this beat right here and you can see kind of, I think this is the same area. So this is like the same part of that drum sound. And although it doesn't look exactly the same, if we kind of zoom out, we kind of see there's a couple of humps here and then there's a dip right here and then there's some more humps right here. And I think if I put the marker right here, it should be about correct. <laughs> and how do you know if it's correct? Well, you don't really, unless it's the exact same waveform, which sometimes you can find, but I think this is close enough. So what I'm gonna do now is turn snapping back on and I'm gonna click and drag a selection between these two markers. I'm just gonna zoom in here to make sure that, yeah, it's right there on that marker and we're good to go. Now if I go up to insert in the menu and then select measure from time selection, Oh, it's pretty close. It's 82.27. Now, I'm thinking that the real tempo for this song is actually 82, and 82 is 82 beats per minute. Now, sometimes you can do this so precisely that it will, uh, it'll give you the exact number. When, I, when I've done this tutorial a few other times, I've gotten exactly 82, but for whatever reason, I didn't get it this time. Doesn't matter, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tempo for this project to 82 beats per minute. So once you've inserted another tempo marker, you'll see that at the very beginning of your project, there is a tempo marker. So if you just double click this and I type 82, you'll see the grid will change. And now I can alt click on my markers to get rid of them and press escape to get rid of that time selection. And now what you'll see is that things are going to align to the grid really nicely. If I jump over here and kind of where the beat drops again, you're gonna see it's really close to this measure line. Now it's not right on the measure because this particular stock music track doesn't start exactly right on top of beat one. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is just alt click and do kind of a slip edit and move this over just a little bit, maybe something like that. And once I've kind of corrected that, anywhere I go now, if I jump back to where this beat drops, you'll see it's in the exact same spot. So now when you are cutting things up, so if you kind of put your edit cursor and you split things, it's always gonna be right on the beat. As long as this stock music track remains at 82 beats per minute. But the way that you can check that is if you align the beginning section, so this is like right on the beat right there, close enough. If you go like a few minutes to the right or a few minutes later in time and you check another beat, it should be like right on a measure line right here. And it looks like uh, maybe, maybe something like that would work. Should be pretty darn close. I don't think it's gonna be too far off. So yeah, that looks, that looks perfectly fine. Now I just had a realization that you may have a different peak display setting than I do. And I wanna show you how I have my peak displays set up. So if you jump over to the menu, you click view and then peak display settings, you will see that I have mine set to spectral peaks. The default is just peaks, which is, well, kind of boring looking. You also have spectrogram and spectrogram plus peaks, but I like to set it to peaks. And I also like to push the opacity of those colorful peaks all the way up so it's nice and colorful. That really helps because it helps you identify what frequencies are contained in the audio, especially for dialogue, it makes it really easy to see where consonants and S sounds are, which can be very handy. But I also just like the way that it looks. So that's that. Let's get on with the music edit. So again, it looks like we have some piano stuff here and then the beat drops. I think it's this section right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a cut right here. So I'm gonna split that with S on the keyboard, delete the part to the left. Jump back to the beginning. Looks like I need to move this one more measure over. So I'm just gonna select a measure here, delete it, and then drag it over to the left. And I think that should be just about the same. Yeah, it looks like this was a little bit behind, but it doesn't matter because if I go a frame over, yeah, it should be close enough. So that frame starts right there and that's aligning, I would say, perfectly fine to this measure line right here. That's gonna be great. So let's see and hear what this sounds like. Yeah. 
that seems pretty good in terms of when the beat drops. I think the only thing that I want to change is what's happening in this piano part in the first three measures. So generally speaking, you will find a trend in stock music that musical phrases are an even number. So two bars, four bars, or measures, bars and measures in musical speak, it means the same thing. So two measures, four measures, eight measures, 16 measures. Three measures is not very common. And in this case, all of the little musical hooks and ideas are in like four or eight measure chunks. And so because we have three measures here, and you can see here's measure one, measure two, and measure three, we're kind of starting this music in the piano on kind of a weird chord. It doesn't start at the beginning of the musical phrase, if you will. It's like part of the way through it. But that's really easy to fix. I think what I'm going to do is just take the first two beats out. So I'm going to go right here to beat two and split it. and then maybe grab this two beats, select this part right here, control, click and drag and duplicate that and move that over here. It's not perfect, but I think that will work because now we're at least starting kind of on the one chord, we're moving to a different chord, and then we jump back into the musical phrase. I think that sounds a little bit more settled than starting halfway through that musical phrase. Now, I have a couple of extra splits here uh, that I don't need, so I can just select these and choose heel splits and items. And then the only thing that I need to deal with is this little edit right here, which currently is not being crossfaded. So if I turn off snapping with alt s i can just make a tiny little crossfade like that or maybe maybe i'll move it back here like that let's see what that sounds like uh, i still feel like i i heard a little jump in there. there's a little like tick or pop or something let's see if we make that a little bit more crossy i think that sounds cleaner yeah, I don't think anyone's going to notice that. I'm getting a little bit into the weeds in terms of like what regular folk will notice. And I think in terms of the end of the video, there is kind of a, a cool hit right here. Which might work. Um, so I could come to the end of the video here. It kind of plays this big hip hoppy groove. And I could either fade it out or I could land on this kind of hit right here. Let's see what that would sound like really quick. I think it would be right here if it were anywhere. So I'm going to really quickly just snip this section here. Delete, delete, bring this over. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, I don't really like that. So I'm just going to leave the music long and then I'll just fade it down like that. That's fine. I can tweak the fade later, but I think that will work for now. So that's feeling pretty good. And now that I have my music locked in, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to lock both of these items here so that I don't move them around as I get into the voiceover and then the sound effects. Now, coming up in the next lesson, you're going to learn how to import the voiceover, do a quick denoising and get it lined up to the video. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to import the voiceover, get it set up with denoising and align it to the video. So the next step of the process for me is going to be getting this voiceover in and aligned to the video. Now, before I do, I want to make sure that I have saved my project because sometimes when I do these tutorials, I do forget to save, but it is a really good idea to do. So I'm going to jump into my folder here and 
call this sound design in Reaper three. All right, let's get the voiceover in this project. I'm going to jump to my assets folder. And this voiceover came from a gentleman named Jonathan Oldham. He's an actor, a voiceover actor. He's got a great Australian deep voice. And you'll see I have two versions of the file that he sent me. One of them is the raw file. The other one is the raw file that I have denoised. And I've done that in Adobe Audition. Now, usually what I like to do is take the voiceover, do a denoise, and then do the edit and processing after which is why I've already done it previously, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Reaper right now. So to do that, I'm going to open up a new project tab. I'm not going to save this because this is just going to be a quick and dirty denoise, but I'll walk you through the steps that should work for you. So this is the voiceover. I'll play it so you can hear what it sounds like. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. To go harder. This voiceover sounds pretty good, but you can see and hear, hopefully, that there is a little bit of noise. And that's because I asked for this voiceover to be sent to me without any processing done to it whatsoever. When you get voiceovers, depending on the artist, depending on the service that you're using, a lot of times it will come already produced, meaning the voiceover artist is going to drop on their default processing chain with denoising and EQ and compression and all kinds of other jazz. That's not how I like to get voiceovers because sometimes they can get a little heavy handed with the processing. It's way easier if they just give you the raw file and you do it yourself. And it's really not that hard. And I'm going to show you how to do it in this course. So to denoise this, the first thing that I want to do is to normalize this just to bring the peaks up to just under zero decibels. To do that, I'm going to hit control shift N and now this is a shortcut that I know that I changed from the default. Um, normally, when you hit Control Shift N, it does something different. And I want to show you that really quick. The default shortcut for normalize in Reaper will normalize items to zero decibel peak. And that's fine for some things, but it's not the most useful normalization action or tool in Reaper which is why I changed the shortcut to this action right here, which is normalize items peak RMS LUFS, because it gives you some more options. If you want to change that, you can do that right here in the actions list. So again, control shift N, that's going to bring that up for me. And now I have all these different options on how I can normalize it. In this particular case, I do want to just normalize it to something like negative one. And now it's going to bring up the level of everything with the highest sample peak being negative one. And now that I've normalized it, you can hear that the background noise you is definitely in there much more than it was before. And that's what I want to remove. And this is really easy to do even with stock plugins in Reaper. So I'm going to open up the effects window here. I'm going to delete the default effects that I have for this track. I'm going to add an effect, and the effect that I'm looking for is called Reefer. And I'm going to add that to this track. Reefer can do a bunch of different things, but I'm going to set the mode to subtract, and then I'll click this automatically build noise profile checkbox right here. And then what I want to do is play a portion of this that's only noise. If I play anything that has any kind of breath noise in it, or any speaking that's going to make the noise reduction sound really funky. And you definitely don't want to do that. So I'm just going to start it at the beginning and play just like one second of it. And then stop it. And that's all you need to do. Then uncheck this automatically build noise profile. And now if you play this, it should sound really, really clean. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. That's pretty much it. Now what I would do from here, if this were like a longer VO, is I would just export it from here and then use it in my other project. That's what I did in Audition because I like the denoising tools in Audition. I think they work pretty well. But this is a great option and it comes with Reaper. So I'm going to take my denoised file, which you will also have access to. I'm going to bring that in my project here. In this particular file, I don't think I normalized, but that doesn't matter too much. 
I'm going to normalize it here. And this time I'm going to set it to LUFS I and then set it to negative 16 or maybe maybe negative 15. The reason why I'm going to normalize it like this is because I know that my final output for this project is going to be negative 14. That's where I want to shoot for the loudness for my entire mix. And I'm going to need to compress this vocal a little bit. So if I shoot for like negative 15, that'll allow me to do some compression and it should work out when I mix everything else together so that I can get a healthy amount of compression and things are going to sound great. You can experiment with normalizing it however you like. This works for me. So now that it's normalized, if I play this, it's going to be nice and loud. I'll just solo this. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. So now it's sounding really good. It is peaking in the track. So one thing that I can do is just enable a compressor here. Now, one thing I don't think I talked about is the default effects that I have on all new tracks in Reaper. I use two third party effects. One of them is called TDR Nova GE. This is a parallel dynamic equalizer, which is like a really good equalizer and a dynamic equalizer built into one. It does a bunch of different things. It's really fabulous. There is a free version of this. It's called TDR Nova, which is basically the same thing with, I think, two less bands, but it's really fabulous. I would highly recommend it. You could also use the stock re EQ plugin, but I generally like this one to use just because it has a few more options for high pass and low pass, but I will be using re EQ a few times throughout this project. For now, I'm going to leave the EQ where it is, and I just want to use a compressor to smooth out or just push down those peaks a little bit. And the compressor that I'm going to use is another third party compressor. This one is called Fur Comp 2, which is a premium effect, but again, there is a free version. It's called Fur Comp 1. This is a fabulous compressor that can do very fast compression with very little distortion. Not only is it good for really fast compression, it can do all kinds of different compression and it's got a bunch of really great presets. Highly recommend it. If you want to use a stock compressor, I would recommend the 1175. This is a compressor that comes with Reaper. It's modeled after the Universal Audio 1176. It has a very fast attack time of 20 microseconds, which is 20 millionths of a second. And it'll be very good for kind of crushing those transients. But I'm going to use this one right here with a ratio of four, the threshold all the way up, an attack time of zero and a release of 100 milliseconds. And I'm just going to pull the threshold down just a touch, maybe like negative three or something like that. Let's see if that works. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. Good. That's great. Good enough for now. The next thing that I want to do is I want to align this so that the voiceover is lining up with the titles. So I'm going to turn off the grid really quick here and also turn off snapping because that's going to drive me nuts. And I'm going to really quickly kind of trim this up and align it all in one step. You don't need to be pushed. I'm going to split it right here. Just trim this little bits up. And in fact, if I drag this to the right, it'll show me right where that lines up with the video. So I know that this next thing, this next thing that he said is pushing is what you do. And if I move this to the right, I can see that right here is when that clip comes up and when that title comes up. So that's very handy to use for alignment. Pushing. And yeah, maybe move it over just a skosh. Pushing is what you do. Maybe a little more. Pushing is what you do. Cool. I'm going to snip it right here and then trim this over to here. And then to go harder right here, I'll just move it a little bit to the right. To go harder. Maybe a little bit more. Faster. That one lines up really well right there, but I will just trim up any of this background jazz right here, just to make it a little cleaner. And then we can find the next section here just by moving this around. So right there. And overcome. Maybe a little more to the right. 
and overcome. Actually, I think th I think that may have just been a little bit too quick. And overcome, come all obstacles. I basically want him to say it during this clip. I don't want it to start before this clip, and I don't want the end of this phrase to uh, be in the next clip. So I think right about there should do it. And overcome all obstacles. It doesn't have to align perfectly with the titles. Those are just kind of placeholders. You push because this is what you love. All of that sounds fine. And then just the last two phrases. Hydro water. And I want hydro water maybe a little later when we can actually see it. Hydro water. Fuel your passion. And then I want this second line to come a little bit quicker. So I'll just move that like that. Water. Fuel your passion. Good. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to select all of those and lock them. I may tweak those a little bit later on, but I think that placement is probably 98% there. And now I can move on to adding sound effects, which you're gonna see coming up in the next several lessons. In this lesson, you will learn how to start adding sound effects to this project. Before I dive in and start chucking sound effects in this project, I really quickly wanna go over my thinking and methodology behind getting sound effects for this project. Now, all the sound effects that I'm using came from Envato Elements. With Envato Elements, you get access to millions of creative digital assets for one low price, including many, many sound effects. So as I'm thinking about each shot, I search for sound effects in Envato Elements. And then when I find sound effects that I think will work, I add them to a collection. There's a little button next to each one of these assets labeled Add to Collection. If you click that, you can find or create a collection. You can see the collection for this project is right here. So I'll go along, find the sound effects that I think will work, and I'll just click add and add them to this collection right here. If I click on the collection, you can see all the sound effects that I have for this project. And usually what I'll do is get a little bit more or sometimes a lot more sound effects than I think that I'll need. Because sometimes you'll get sound effects and you'll start to edit them and you'll realize, oh, these don't really work together or they maybe clash with the music or the VO or something. So I like to have a few different options for each thing. Sometimes you don't have that luxury because the thing that you're trying to find sound effects for is very difficult. But I throw everything in a collection. And once I think I have all the sound effects that I need, I go through and I download all of the sound effects page by page. And once I have one page of sound effects downloaded, I jump over into my downloads folder and I will download the license for each one of those sounds. And that way I know that I have licenses for every single sound effect that I'm going to be using. And then I jump back over to my sound effects and I jump to the next page and do the same thing. I download all of them and then I download all of the licenses. Now, I know that I'm not going to use all of these sound effects, but it is much more convenient to download them and then get all the licenses for all the things that I think I'm going to need rather than downloading 95 sound effects using 60 of them and then trying to go back on Envato Elements and find all 60 of those sound effects because sometimes the file names don't match the item name and that can be a little bit tricky to do. So I just get all the downloads, I get all the licenses, throw them into a folder, do a little bit of organization and that's how I go about getting sound effects for projects like this. All right, let's jump back in Reaper and start getting sound effects into this project. So one thing that I like to do to kind of break things up visually is I like to throw some markers in the project to just identify where each shot is. And like I mentioned in a previous lesson, there's a keyboard shortcut for moving the edit cursor forward and back one grid division. So if I right click on the grid here and then set this to frames, I can use that keyboard shortcut like I showed you in a previous lesson, which is shift, control, right and left arrow. But you can hear what it does when I do that. It makes a very hilarious kind of tape stop noise. And for those of you who are younger, you're not going to know what a tape is or even what that concept is. 
Anyway, it makes a weird noise, and that is why I showed you that additional script by X-Ray M, which I have mapped to my four and six keys on the number pad, which does the same thing. This jumps frame by frame, but it doesn't make that really obnoxious noise. So what I'm going to do is scrub along here and find the beginning of each shot. And then I'm going to click M on the keyboard and just drop a marker. There. I have all my markers. I know that the first shot is that aerial shot. I can throw one marker there if I want. And then what I like to do is just name the markers. Now, you can go individually and double click on each one, or you can go to the view menu right here and then go down to region marker manager right here. Make sure you have markers checked. And then what you can do is name all of these. So if you click on the marker, it goes right to that spot in time. So I can just name this skateboarder, snowboarder, logo cans. And then this is that wide shot at the beginning. So wide skateboarder. And I think you can renumber in timeline order. If you haven't changed the keyboard shortcuts for the one through nine key, those should map to the first nine markers. You can jump between that way and that's very handy. So now that I have my marker set up, I'm going to start adding sound effects to this project. So I'm going to bring up the Media Explorer by hitting Control Alt X on the keyboard, and I'm going to navigate to where I have all of my sound effects located. You can see that I've done some organization. I have several folders, including my licenses folder, but all the other folders contain sound effects. So if I jump to the beginning of my project here, and I'm going to mute the music and the VO so that I can just focus on the sound effects, I'm just going to play the beginning here. So I think what will work for this shot is some kind of ambient, maybe wind noise, you know, some kind of noise from up in the air. And I've downloaded a few different options here. I have this nice kind of forest with wind. It's pretty quiet, but I think it could work. I have this clip right here, which is actually a four channel clip. And then I have some C ambience, which I'm going to use later on down the line. So I think this clip right here can work. And what I could do is pull this entire clip in on a new track, but I don't really need it to be this long. And I can also maybe target the spot that I want to actually use, which is probably over here somewhere. Yeah, this looks like a nice kind of healthy bit of wind noise. So I'm just going to make a selection. And I'm going to pull this into my project. It's still way too much, but that's totally fine. I'm just going to trim it up here. And I do have snapping enabled. And that will snap right to my markers, which is very convenient. Now, I did change one of the default options in the Media Explorer. I think by default, this option is enabled, which is enable looping when inserting selected portion of media. Now, with this enabled, if you make a selection, like that, and then you insert, what you will find when you trim this, either the beginning or the end, is it will automatically loop this clip. In other words, it'll automatically loop forever. And I don't prefer that. So I just turned that off. I wanted to show that to you. If that is something that you do prefer, feel free to uh, leave that enabled. All right, so I do wanna make this clip a little bit louder because it is pretty quiet. And I could adjust the volume right here. But I think what I'm going to do is just select the media item, hit control shift N and bring up the normalize media items window and normalize this to something like negative 23. I think that'll be a good starting place for some of these more ambient type clips. And then I can mix them a little bit later if I need to adjust their levels. Cool. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to make just a quick adjustment to the EQ and maybe pull down some of that high frequency stuff just a little bit. Now this looks like it's an aggressive EQ, but if you look at the scale here, that's only about a six decibel cut. So it's not a tremendous amount. And generally I like to put a high pass on most of the items that I know don't contain a significant amount of low frequency content because it kind of cleans up the low end for the music and any sound effects that do have low frequency content. 
And right now I'm listening on headphones and I know these headphones don't produce a lot below like 40 hertz. So for things that I know don't have a lot of bass content or I know that don't need bass, I'll just throw a high pass on them around 30, 40, 50 hertz, something like that. So let's see what that sounds like. Cool, I think that's good to go for now. Now, I did show you color palette for a reason, and I'm gonna start using that in this lesson in the next several lessons. Because what I like to do with sound effects is I like to colorize each one of the tracks in track folders. So I'm just gonna make this one purple. I'm also going to name this track ambient. And then if I wanna throw other ambient sounds in this track, I can later on if I need to. But for now, I'm gonna move on to the next clip of this long border here. I don't know if that's a long board, but that's kind of what it looks like to me. And let's see what I have for skateboard sounds. I think that could possibly work. That could also possibly work. I downloaded some marble clips because, well, I wasn't sure that these two skateboard clips would work exactly. And actually I found two clips of these marbles rolling on some kind of surface and I thought they might work to mix in. So what I'm gonna do is add a new track, call it Skateboarder. I'm gonna add a few more tracks and then pull those tracks up so that they are now inside this track folder. And what that means is that all the audio from these four tracks gets routed through this track right here, which means I can control the level that is coming in this skateboarder track, which is all four of these tracks with this one fader right here. I can also apply effects to this track, which again, all the audio from these four tracks is being routed through this fader. So, and that really helps if I need to make an adjustment to all of the skateboard sounds, I can do that with one track. If I need to compress it a little bit, I don't need to throw a compressor on multiple tracks. I can generally get away with doing compression and EQ on just one track if I need to. So let's see, I'll start with this clip right here and I think I can use maybe this much right here. And a lot of this is gonna be kind of trial and error. I'm gonna throw this in, see if it works. If it doesn't work, maybe slide it around and move on. I also like this one. I'm gonna bring this down the whole clip and then hold Alt and click and drag to do a slip edit to get that positioned a little bit better because I think this shot starts, yeah, where the skateboarder is closer to camera and then they kind of move away. So let's see if these two clips get the job done. I'd say that's pretty close. Now there is kind of a, a little slide that happens right there. I wonder if I can find that maybe in this clip right here. I think there's kind of a slidey sound maybe in here somewhere. Maybe I'll just grab this and see if I can double up on it to get the right effect. Essentially, I just wanna kind of punctuate this little slide that she does right at the beginning of this shot. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if that worked. Maybe make this a little bit bigger and then fade it so it kind of has a little bit more ramp. Ooh, that almost worked just not quite long enough. I think that is a good place to start. I might add one of these rolling marble clips in there just for good measure. Let's see if that works. Looks like that's a little too quiet. I'll just roll it forward a little bit. All right, let's see how this marble clip sounds in there. I'm just gonna make this a little louder. Cool, I think that works pretty well. I'm gonna get rid of this for just a second. What's happening in the clip is that she's moving away from camera, which means that probably I need to do something with the volume for the skateboarding clips. I think I can probably do that with a little volume automation. And I might throw another track in here and then take these two clips, or maybe these three clips, and throw them inside 
of this one right here, and then press V, and then shift click two times to make a little bit of a volume ramp. This is basic volume automation. When you press V on the keyboard, it brings up the volume envelope, and then you can click to add points. And what this will do is it'll turn the volume down on this clip as it plays. Check it out. Okay, that was the right idea, but a little heavy handed. So I'm just gonna slide this to the right a little bit. And if you hold control and shift after you click, it will lock the position to the first direction that you move. So if you wanna move this up and down and you don't wanna move it right and left, just hold control and shift. But in this case, I wanna move it to the right, but I don't wanna move it up and down. So I'm gonna move it to the right and then hold control and shift. So right about here, I think she starts to go away. And I think this was probably just too much. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. Let's see if that works. Ooh, that's pretty close. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much. Cool. The other thing that I can do is I can do a little bit of EQ automation. Now, when I do EQ automation, um, I click on this trim button here, and then I look for the band that I want to adjust. But if you look at all the options that there are with Tokyo Dawn Labs Nova, it's way too much. So in this particular case, what I like to do is just use the stock EQ in Reaper, which is called Re-EQ, because it's a lot more simple and I can just delete some of these other bands because I really only need one and I wanna make it a low pass and I'm gonna start it way up here and just bring it down a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the trim button right here and I'm gonna come down to frequency low pass one because that's the only band that I have available. And you can see that envelope shows up right here. I'm gonna shift click two times to set two points. That second point there was not very easy to see, but I'll just zoom in to the envelope by holding control and alt and then right clicking and dragging. And you can see I get this nice little magnifying glass tool and I can zoom right in. So let me try that again. So I'll just zoom in right here and I'll pull this down maybe to there. I don't know exactly what that's gonna sound like, but I'll give it a shot. Let's see. Ooh, I think that can work. Cool. I think that's good for now. I'm gonna leave it. And I'm also going to add one more clip in here. I'm gonna add one more track right here. Bring up my Media Explorer, because I think this needs kind of an obnoxious wind sound to give it the impression that this is really going pretty fast. So I found some windy type clips. This one's a pretty good one. And then I don't think that's the right kind of wind, but I think this one could work. So I'm going to select a bit of that and drop that right on this track right here. And let's see if that works. Yeah, I might have something else in uh, this dirt or gravel clip. Yeah, like this might work right here. So instead of this windy clip, I might be able to drop this in. That might do the trick. Let's see. And then I might be able to just maybe low pass this a little bit. Let's see. I'm gonna make a selection here, press R on the keyboard so it repeats. I don't know. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Let's check it out. Well, I'll leave it for now and I'll come back to it. I'm gonna make these, maybe this pink color. And that's good to go. Now there is a pretty healthy peak here. So I'm gonna to jump to my effects and I'm just gonna enable the compression 
And I'll just pull the threshold down a little bit. And these settings should work to knock that peak down a little bit and keep it in check. I'll just pull it down a little bit more, increase the ratio just a little bit. I think actually I could do with taking this clip and moving it up here and then just pulling the level down just a little bit. And I think I might be able to punch up that slide sound by giving it a little bit of an EQ. So let's see, I wanna hear what just this sounds like. So maybe if I just bump up. Yeah, I might be able to just high pass this up to accentuate these frequencies here. Let's we'll see if that kind of comes through at all. Yeah, not really. I think maybe, I think maybe these are just a hair too loud. So I'm gonna turn down the marble a little bit and maybe turn these down just to skosh. Maybe the marble needs to come down even more. Let's just mute it. It's tough to kind of hear because these are these are pretty intense. So let me turn that down a little more. Ooh, that's not bad. I'm going to go with that. Cool. Like I said before, a lot of this is kind of tweaking little things. So I'm going to actually get rid of my marble track because I like the way it's sounding without it. And I'm going to move on. So I'm going to press escape and get rid of that time selection. And I'm going to move on to the next shot, which you are going to see coming up in the next lesson. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to add more sound effects and stitch multiple sound effects together. So for this next shot, we have this snowboarder and they're carving it up here. And what I want to do is really punch up the sound of those carves. So I want to get the sound of that snowboard really scraping in there to that snow. So back to the Media Explorer, I'm going to jump in my snow folder. And I have several clips of different snowy type things a couple of snowmobiles or snowmobiles. And then I have some skis and some general snow sound effects. Let's check them out. Cool. I think that one could be a really good contender here for what's happening on screen. All right. I think the rest of these are not going to work because they're snowmobile and some wind type clips. So let's start stitching this together. I like this clip. because it's got a really nice kind of pan from right to left. I think this could work. So I might start with this and I'm gonna drag that out. And actually what I wanna do is pull this down one track and then move this track into this folder called Snowboarder. In any of these clips that need multiple sounds, I'm going to put in track folders because it just makes organizing and leveling out these sounds a lot easier. So this starts with the snow border right in the camera's face. So I think I want to kind of trim it up so that it starts on a big part of this slide. And that sounds really cool. Although if you listen to the panning, it's kind of backwards. The panning is going from right to left, and actually I want it to go from left to right because they're on the right side of the screen. And I think that'll make more sense. So if I right click on this clip and I go to item settings, I can reverse the stereo and you'll see what that does here. And that should sound, I think a little bit better. Let's check it out. 
Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Just like that. I'm going to need a few more tracks in here. I'll just select this snowboarder track and then hit control T so they populate in my track folder. And let's see what else I have. I want to get the second slide, which I think starts right here. So let's find a sound for that. And I think I can use maybe towards the end of this clip here is a pretty good slide. Or maybe that one right there, because that's kind of punchy and it's pretty short. So I'm just going to zoom in right here and I'll make this one a little louder. Let's see if that one works. And I think it needs to start right about here. Let's check that out. Actually, it needs to start a little sooner. That's not bad. And then there's one final kind of scrapity sound right here. As they get towards the camera, let's see if I have something for that. Maybe this one. Let's see if that works. I'll throw that in here and fade that in just a little bit. Let's see if these work. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this one comes over here. Let's try that. That's not bad. I think I also want to add one more track in here and then just add kind of a blanket snowy sound which I think this one could work right here. But I'm just going to keep it nice and nice and low in level. So I'll just pull that in here and trim it up. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's looking good. Now I need one more of those kind of slide sounds. As they're coming to camera, I want it to kind of ramp up as it goes to the next scene. So that one might work. Let me throw another track in here. Let me get that one in here. And I think I'm just going to need to punch up the volume quite a bit. Let's see if that works at all. Yeah, might need to mix it with another one. I think I use that one. Yeah, that might work. So let me grab another track here. Pop that up here, something like that. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I can probably pull this down because I it's probably a little too loud. And the same thing with this one. Let's try that. I think I want this one to be even louder. I want it to be obnoxious. And maybe I'll fade it down like this. And I'm also hearing this one doesn't have the right tonality to it. It's not quite as crispy. It doesn't have that high frequency sizzle like the other ones do. So I think I can just fix that with a little EQ. I'll probably just maybe bump up the high frequencies a little bit. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, maybe maybe it needs maybe it needs more like this range right here. I'll just make a time selection and loop it. Yeah, I think that works. Cool. I think that works pretty well. I'm actually going to have these ones trail over the edge just a touch and then fade them out. Something like that. Let's see if that works. I'll turn looping off or repeats off. You can also click down here to do that, but it's R on the keyboard. Cool. I think that works great. And I will colorize these as well. So I'll bring up color palette again and make these nice and bright white. I can see that there's also a healthy little peak here. So I'll just enable the compressor, pull the threshold down a little bit. And let's listen to what that sounds like. Looks like it didn't quite catch all the peaks. I might be able to 
compress this one a little bit as well. I'll just increase the ratio a little bit. Maybe I'll just turn it down. I'll just bring it back down to its default. And then I will turn the rest of these down uh, instead of trying to make that one louder because it's probably an issue that I just don't have my headphone volume up loud enough. So it doesn't seem as impactful as it maybe normally would. So I'll just pull these down by a little bit. I think that should do it. I think that'll work. Looks like our levels are good. So it's time to move on to the next shot. All right. The next two shots are swimmers. So I need some water sounds, specifically some swimming sounds. So I'm going to create a new track. Whoops, looks like that showed up up there. No problem. I'm going to name this swim. And let's check out what sound effects I have for swimming. That one might work. I have two shots that I need sounds for. I have this wide shot and a tight shot here. And I'm gonna line the splashes up with this guy's hands going in the water, but I'll do that in just a minute. So first I need something for this wide shot here. I actually have two clips of a swimming race. These might work. That's pretty good. So this one might work. I want to pop this one in there and I'll pull that up so that it is in the track folder there. And I'll probably need to do some volume automation so that it's maybe a little bit quieter on the wide shot. And then it's a little bit louder uh, when it gets to the tight shot, which I can also do by just adjusting the volumes here and splitting it. So if you didn't catch what I just did, I'll undo that. Trimmed up the beginning put the edit cursor right here and pressed S on the keyboard, which split this media item. And now I can adjust the volume right here. It's a little bit quicker and faster to do than doing volume automation, but you could do that too if you want. Yeah, something like that I think works pretty good. I also think this needs maybe a little bit of ambience. So I have some ambient kind of C sounds here. This might work. Yeah, I think this could work right here. I'll get that in here and I'll pull this up to the top so that my ambience for the swim stuff is up top and then I'll work these as the splashes. So let's see what that sounds like. And then when we go to the tight shot, I'm going to bring the ambience down a little bit. Hey, it's already sounding pretty nice. It would be nice to have some seagulls in there. So maybe I'll replace this clip right here by dragging it on top and then choosing to replace it just like that. Again, if you didn't catch what I just did, I made a selection, pulled that over this clip and then Reaper comes up with this replace media item source dialog box and you have a bunch of options by default replace the target media with the source media is selected and then you choose okay and then it just replaces that bit of media right there so i think that might work cool i think that works pretty well this might have a little bit too much low rumble in it so i'll just high pass that a little bit and let's see if we can add a few more splashes here for this guy swimming. So I'll jump down to the swimming folder. So that's definitely a swimming clip. And what I'm listening for is it's some very distinctive kind of splashy noises that I can use to align with this guy hitting the water. I'm not sure that that really works, but let me check out this other clip.
I don't think this one works because it's it's panned too much. And I could split this, but I'm not sure that would work either. But I'll take another listen right here. That actually might work. So let me show you how to do that really quick. I'm just going to select a little bit of this. because I think that's all I'll need. I'm going to drag that down here. Then right click on this. Actually, I'm going to make this a little longer. And then I'll right click on it. Go down to item processing and choose explode multi-channel audio. And that will basically take the right and left channel, spit it out into two mono wave files here. And then I'll just clean this up by deleting this extra stuff. And now I have just the left channel, I believe right here. So what I'm going to do is find where he splashes his hand in and I'll just go frame by frame. So right here, there's one. And then right there, there's one. I think it's just those two. So I'll align maybe this splash right here. See if that works. Oh, that almost works. I just need to maybe extend this a little bit and then marry these together. Let's see if that works. Oh, I would buy that. I think that works pretty well. Let me watch it one more time. I think that is perfectly fine. I'm going to select all of my swimming tracks, open up color palette and choose a nice swimmy color like blue. And then I'm going to collapse these and get them out of the way and move on to the next clip right here, which is drifting, which you're going to see coming up in the next lesson. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to add some drifting and running sound effects. I'm picking up right where I left off in the last lesson. I'm going to keep adding sounds to this project until we get to the end. I'm going to open up the Media Explorer here and hop to the next section because I need some engine and tire squeal sounds for this section right here. So this is another section that I'm going to use multiple sound effects to make this feel and sound correct. So I have a folder here with a ton of different engine noises and tire squeals. Actually, I think these are just engine noises. So let's check them out. That one could work. Not all of these are going to work. And like I said before, when I was downloading these sound effects, I was just thinking, well, this might work. This might work. I'll just get it and see if it works because you never know. Sometimes you can mix things together and you can get sound effects to work that you wouldn't normally think would work. This one is a great one right here. I like this. In fact, I'm going to make a selection here. Maybe get this bit here and throw that into the project so that I don't lose this one because I think this one's going to work really well. And I'll pull this down here and then pull it up into the folder and I'll call this drifting. Very good. Let's see what else I have. That one's okay. I think that's okay. I'm not sure it'll work, but I'm going to get just this part of it in and we'll see if I can work that in because I like the tone of it. That one's okay, but it doesn't sound like a car under load. This one's okay. And then I have some other draggy ones in there too. So I can come back to those, but let's see if these engine clips get it done. 
And actually I have way too much because this is pretty short. So let's look at just these clips right here. The only thing I think I want to do is maybe do some panning because this car here starts, well, it's in the center. And then it comes to the left side of the screen. I almost said right, it comes to the left side of the screen. So I can either pan one of these so that it starts maybe a little bit to the right and then comes to the left. I'll try that first. So I'm going to open up the track envelope and automation options here and just select pan. And then I'll move this, let's see, it's on the right side. And then I'll shift click to add a point and move it over to the left a little bit. Uh, so it's actually stays to the center until about here. So I'm going to move that point over there. Let's see if that sounds right. Yeah, not really. Let me move, make that a little bit louder. It doesn't quite. Yeah, this one might work. So I'll enable panning here. And I'll do the same thing. So I'll make this go to the left. Yeah, that that feels a little bit better. This a little just a touch louder. Actually, I think it's loud enough. Cool. I think that's okay for now. We need to get some tire squeal action here because that'll really help to sell it. So let's check out some of these tire squeal sounds that I have in this tires folder. That's a great clip right there. I think that's going to work really well. So I'm going to add just a couple more tracks in here and pull this one in. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, I think that can work too. Again, I probably only need about that much of it. Ooh, that's nice. Those sound like accidents. That's kind of an interior kind of sound. Let's see if I can make this work with just these tire squeal sounds. So I think I need to do the same kind of thing with maybe this clip right here. I'll do the same kind of pan action where I will pan it over to the left. And I'll mute this one for now, see what that sounds like. Maybe even make it more drastic. Maybe pull it down just a hair. In fact, I think I'll probably need to manage my levels a little bit. They don't really need to be this loud. Sometimes it's tough to tell when I'm mixing with headphones and I have a microphone because I generally don't run my headphone volume that loud. But when I mix on my speakers, I have it a little bit louder. I think that's okay. I might be able to get a little bit better imaging if I explode this. So I'm going to take these two tracks and pull them out of the track folder. And then I'm going to come down to this track right here and delete it because I don't need it anymore. And then I'll take just this squeal right here, which will probably sound similar to this. And then I'll just pan this one. I don't know if this is going to work, but it might. Let's see if that works. Yeah. I might do the same thing to this one and really double it up. Or I'll just leave it. Yeah, I'll just leave it for now. I'm going to get rid of this one. And let's check out this second tire squeal clip. Yeah, I think this could work. But they're very similar in pitch, so I'm going to delete it for now and see if I can find another one of these clips to layer in here. It 
This one might work. I want to pull this one in here. Yeah, it looks like it could be the right length. I'll just kind of fade it in. Let's see if that looks and sounds nice. Yeah, that could work. In fact, I can probably just control click and extend this out. And now I have a lower pitch squeal and a, and a higher pitch squeal. And I think I can pull this down just a little bit. And if anything, this might need, and I, I know I love to tweak things uh, just forever, but I'm thinking it might need this Ferrari sound right here. Because it's really intense, and I think it could work. So I'm going to throw that in down here. Let's see if that sounds good at all. I think that's okay for now. I'm good to go with that. It might need a little bit of EQ down the line, but I'm good with it for now. So I'm just gonna make this orange and I'm gonna move on to this next clip here of this guy running. Now this is gonna be a tricky clip because he's running in slow motion, but you can't have sound effects that you download in slow motion because, well, they just don't sound like anything. You know what I mean? You, you can't record someone in slow motion. That's not the way it works. So let's see how we can make this work. Call this runner. I'll bring back Media Explorer. And I have a few clips of running. Let's see what we have. Yee, that person sounds like they're getting chased. So that's that's okay. What about this one? Not bad. Yeah. And then running on snow. I'm not sure why I thought this one would be good, but. Well, it does kind of sound like someone's running on a gravel track or a dirt track maybe, but I think I can use these other ones. So let's start with this one and I'm gonna pull that down here and then pull it up into my running track folder. And here's the trick. Here's the trick that I need to do. The first thing that I'm going to do is put a marker every time this person's foot hits the ground. So I'm going to go frame by frame here. So I have these markers here. And also what I like to do is go back into the region marker manager, select, what is that? 15 through 19, 15 through 19, and change their color. So I'm going to make these, actually I'll make them dark blue. And that way I can visually see they're different than all these other markers. So here's the trick. I want to stretch out this audio so that there is a foot kind of hit on every one of these markers. And then I want breath noises in between. So I think I can start with this foot hit right here. So I'm going to trim that up and then we kind of have like right foot, left foot. And for whatever reason, one of the feet is louder in the recording. So what I can do is just split the media item right before this second foot hit and then press alt and click and drag. And I'll just move this second foot hit right here. And then I can do just a little bit of a crossfade right there. And that should stitch those together. Oh yeah, that's going to work great. And I'll do the same thing right here. And it looks like I need to move my crossfade over a little bit. So I'm just going to split it before the second little transient happens and then alt click and drag to move that over just a little bit and then just do a little crossfade. I think the snap is locking onto some stuff and that's driving me nuts. So I'm going to turn off snapping temporarily. And then I think we'll just leave it like that until the end. And that should be pretty good. Let's see if that sounds correct. 
That sounds pretty good to me. That's, that's not bad. I would say that's like 80% of the way there. I'm going to high pass that. And I can see there are a little bit of transient kind of spikes in there, so I'm just going to enable the compressor. That's not bad. It sounds a little weird when you hear it played back seven times in a row. Um, but I think it's going to work. I'm going to add another track and then I think I can maybe layer in this footsteps on dirt or concrete. Probably the concrete's going to work better because this does not look like dirt to me. It looks like a rubber track. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want to zoom in here and just align these footsteps. Now, the audio between these footsteps here, and I'll zoom way in. I don't know what that is, but let's listen. Okay, that's really hard to see what the heck's going on. Yeah, sounds like there's like a weird pants, like fabric noise. So I think maybe we'll just selectively, and by we, I mean me, selectively use these uh, foot hits here, and I'll just trim up any weird sounding ones. Yeah, that's okay. I'll split that there. Any of the ones that I hear that weird kind of fabric zingy sound, I think I'm just going to get rid of. That sounds pretty good. Oh, and that's it. That's it. Wow, that was fast. That was fast. And now I can select all of these, hold Control and Alt, and then just do a little bit of a fade out. Cool. That sounds pretty good. And I feel like maybe this needs a little bit of ambience, but let's hear it one more time, kind of isolated. We might be able to get a little wind in here. This might work, I don't know. Just throw a little bit of ambience in there. So this is a weird clip because it's got four tracks in it. This clip has four audio channels in it, and I think I only want one in two. So I can get to those by right clicking, going to item settings, and then choose stereo one and two, and that will discard channels three and four. Now that doesn't sound like anything, so let's normalize that up to negative 23, which is way too loud, so let's turn that back down. Yeah, that's okay. It's a little bit uh, rumbly, so I'm just gonna high pass that a little bit. Yeah, that's not bad. I think that can definitely work. It just gives a little bit of ambience. I might add another, maybe maybe some wind that trees, windy sound might actually work in here as well. Like maybe this little bit right here. And I can't see that, so let me now normalize it, and I'll just turn that down, because that's definitely going to be too loud, especially against this other one here. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's good enough for now. So... I'm going to select all of these and colorize these. I'm going to make this, this medium red color to match the track. And next up, snowmobile and mountain bikes. So check that out coming up next. In this lesson, you will learn how to add the rest of the sound effects for this project. So I'm picking up right where I left off in the last lesson. I'm about two thirds of the way through adding sound effects. 
to this project. You can see I have 32 tracks here. And next up, I'm going to add some snowmobile clips and some mountain bike clips. Now, not all of these video sections need multiple clips, and I'm not sure that the snowmobile will. But the only way to find out is to get in here and start adding stuff and see what works and what doesn't. I'll start with a couple of tracks here. I'll name this snowmobile, bring up the media explorer and get some clips in here. So in my snow folder, I have that snowmobile clip. That one. So I think maybe this last one will work fine. Maybe this less intense section right here. Let's see what that sounds like against the video. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think maybe it just needs some snowy sounds to go with it. And I think I can use this ski clip here. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of this. And also. Maybe a little bit of this in the background. I don't know if that's going to work, but we'll see. I don't think this one might be working. Let's see. Yeah, not that part of it anyway. Let's try this. Yeah, maybe a little less engine, a little more snow. Let's try that. Eh, it's okay. I think maybe one of these other skiing clips might work. Yeah, maybe this right here. So I'm just going to replace, whoops, I'm going to replace that because I think that'll work better. Let's check that out. That's okay. And I might be able to layer another snowmobile sound in there. Maybe this one, just to give the impression that may maybe there's multiple people riding. I don't know. Yeah, let's try that. I buy that. I think that works just fine. Yeah, maybe I don't need this wind one. I'm just going to delete it. Cool. Sounds good. I'm going to colorize those really quick before I move on. I'll make these white because it's another snow type clip. And then I have the mountain biker right up here. So I'm going to make another track. Make a few more tracks underneath. And actually, I think I'm going to need a couple here. Bring up my media explorer and let's check out what I have for bike sounds. Yeah, I'm not sure that one works. It kind of sounds like some stuff blowing around in the wind. This could work. Maybe that that part right there. I'm going to pull this section down here in. Looks like that was way too much. So I'll start with this. That's not bad. Let's see what else we have. That section right there sounds pretty cool. I'm going to get that in here. Maybe like that much of it, something like that. And I like I like this kind of bumpy sound right here. So I'm going to move that 
in by alt-clicking and dragging. And I'll zoom up on this section here so we can take a better look at it. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, because there's kind of a jump at the end of this clip. Like, right... Is it right there? Maybe, maybe there's not a jump, but we could make it sound like there is. Oh yeah, there's, there's a little jump there. Yeah, that kind of works. Where's that jump? It's actually, let me go frame by frame. So it's right here, actually. It's a little bit closer than I thought. So I'll move this right up here. Crossfade that just a little bit. Not bad. In fact, I think I can maybe get this little noise here to line up. Cool, that's pretty good. It needs maybe a little bit of wind, maybe a little bit more gravel sound. So let's see if we can punch that up a little bit with something like this. Eh, that kind of sounds like an avalanche. Actually, this is an avalanche. I'm not really sure why I thought that would be a good sound effect. Um, see if one of these windy clips would work. This might work right here. That's okay. And let's see if there's another... clip that could work in here. Yeah, that could work. Let's try that. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I found it. So enough tweaking and I found something <laughs> that kind of works. Now, I think it's a little bit too crispity crunchity. So I'm going to maybe throw a low pass on there. And I'll just bring the level down a little bit. That's not bad. I don't know if this wind clip is necessary. Yeah, I don't think it is because once it, this gets mixed in with the voiceover and the music, I don't think you're going to notice that this is a little windy. I think it's just going to come across as noise. I'm going to color that as brown. And you know what? I'm just going to push through to the end here. I'm going to add another track and call it Climber. Two more tracks because I think I only have two climbing clips. Let's see. I think there were more available, but I just didn't think they were going to work. But here's what I got. This is kind of a gym fitness treadmill, very long clip here. It's like five minutes long. So maybe a little bit of gym ambience might work. I don't know. Honestly, it's not the best clip for sound design because there's not much. It's, it's a person hanging on a wall. What does that sound like? I don't know. Kind of sounds like a cafeteria maybe, but I'll just turn it down a little bit. Maybe it'll work. And I also have, oh yeah, I have this. Okay, so that could work. Yeah, uh, I'll just pull the whole clip down here. And maybe I'll line up this to when she makes a move. That might work. I wonder if I can use one of these breath noises. This might work. Let's see. I 
I'm going to leave it for now because honestly, it's a short clip and I don't think it matters that much. And I think I'll make this purple, like maybe a dark purple, because I want the river tracks to be blue. So that's the next sound effect that I need. This river section, I'll add two more tracks. I'm just going to preemptively color these dark blue. And let's see what kind of sounds I have for water and river. Well, I just have one. Cool, I think that's going to work. So <laughs> I'm going to get that down here. And I'll just split it right there. And let's see what that sounds like. Wow, it sounds like really loud water. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Cool, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to add a little fade up here. And maybe some ambience on top of this. I don't know, maybe this? Yeah, this is kind of a splashy kind of sound. I think that'll work actually with this clip. Let's see. It's probably too loud. So I'm just going to zoom in here. This clip is taking over. It's too loud. Cool. I think that's fine. It sounds like a white noise, but uh, I think it works. Finally, we have this end bit here where the cans hit. And so I'm going to add one more track. Cans. I don't really have anything for the can sound effects. But I think I can punch this up with maybe a boom or a riser or something like that. I don't know. Let's see what I have in the old sound effects vault. I did download some impacts. So this might work here. This is kind of a cool sound. Maybe to punch up the. Uh, Appearance of the cans. When do they show up? Oh, it's right here. This is why it's helpful to have these markers because you don't have to fiddle around with placement. I know that clip cuts right here. So let's see what this sounds like. Ooh, that's quite nice. And then it would be cool to have maybe a fog kind of sound because this, you know, these nice cold, ice cold cans are surrounded by some ice cold fog, which you can tell because the fog is sinking, or mostly sinking, so you know it's cold. At least that's, that's the idea. And I don't have a clip of fog, but what I might be able to do is take a clip like this uh, forest mixed high trees winds distant varied afternoon clip. What a great name. And I think I can maybe make some fog sound out of this. So I'm going to drag this down into my project. Now, I know that fog does not have a particular sound, but I might be able to make it work. So I'm going to normalize this, make it nice and loud. Already it kind of sounds foggy, like misty maybe. But what I'm going to do is Grab re-EQ, which is already selected because it was the last effect that I searched for in the effects browser. And I think what I can do is maybe do an effect automation here, like a little EQ automation. So I'm going to get rid of these other bands and I'm going to change this to a low pass. And I think I can maybe just low pass this and automate it down like I did at the beginning when I was working on the skateboarder. I think that it may work here. Let's see, I will repeat this section and see if that is going to work. Yes, I do believe that will work. I'm gonna go into the automation and envelopes and let's see, I'm looking for frequency, low pass. I'm gonna enable that. And then I'll just shift click, add two points and make a shape that looks like this. I know that purple color is not very visible. I think that's one of the things that you can't change. 
with color palette, which is kind of a bummer. That's okay though. I think you can see the general idea. It's gonna start up nice and high and then sweep down low. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, that was pretty close, but this one needs to come over. It needs to be a lot faster. Maybe even faster than that. And I'm just gonna adjust the curve here by holding Alt. Yeah, I think that could work. And I'm also going to fade this out. Cool. I think that works fine. And lastly, I will just colorize these. Where's yellow? Yellow. There we go. I'll make them yellow because I haven't used yellow yet. Wow. That was a lot of sound effects. 50 tracks. Now, they don't all have audio on them, but man, that was a lot. All right, coming up in the next lesson, we're going to get into mixing and a little bit more processing as we look at balancing the music, the voiceover, and these sound effects. Check that out coming up next. In this lesson, you will learn how to mix down this project, apply some processing to the VO, and manage levels. And speaking of levels, up until this point, the volume of most of my sound effects have been on the loud side, probably a good bit louder than they need to be. When I do tutorials, I like to make sure that all of the audio is fairly loud so that you can hear the subtleties of things mixing together. And if they're at a lower level, that is just harder to hear. So what I have right now is a loud voiceover, loud music, and very loud sound effects. And if I play it all together, it's going to sound like this. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. In other words, it's going to sound like a hot garbage dumpster fire because you can't have three super loud things at the same time and expect to get clarity with all of them. So we need to jump in here and fix what is happening in the mix and control these levels a little bit more. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is address the voiceover really quickly. I'm going to unlock all of these items and I'm going to renormalize them. When I first normalized them way back at the start of this course, it was a little bit aggressive and I'm going to normalize them again, but this time I'm going to make sure that normalize each item separately is checked. And I'm just gonna bring the levels down a touch because I think before I normalized them to maybe negative 15 or 16 or something like that. And that normalized the entire media item. But now that I have it all cut up, I can normalize each one separately, which is going to really help in leveling out each one of these little phrases here. In fact, I could even split this one right here, which should further help to level things out. So again, Control Shift N on the keyboard. I'm gonna set this to LUFS I, negative 17 and normalize each item separately. There we go. So it just brought things down a little bit. I don't think anything is actually louder than it was before, but I think this is going to be more appropriate for this project. Now I'm gonna jump into the processing here. First, I'm gonna get started with an EQ. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. To go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love. Hydro water, fuel your passion. So mostly I think this voiceover sounds pretty good. I just added a little bit of sizzle to the top end, or in other words, I just boosted the higher frequencies with this high shelf filter here. And it looks like this is pretty aggressive, but if you look at the scale here, that's only a six decibel boost, which is really not that much at all. And everything else is cut between, I don't know, three and four and a half decibels. So it's actually pretty conservative. And again, I'm mixing on headphones right now. Normally I do this on my calibrated studio monitors and my subwoofer, which gives me a better idea of what this actually sounds like. 
But for these headphones, I think that's a good place to start. You don't need to be pushed. In fact, there may be a little bit too much energy right here, so I'm just going to pull down maybe this just a touch. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing. That's fine for now. The main reason that I like to use this EQ is that it does equal loudness compensation. And what that means is if I boost some frequencies, it turns the overall volume of the track down so that it is at the same loudness that it was before I started EQing. And that is very, very helpful because it doesn't trick your brain into thinking that the louder sound is better, which your brain will always think is correct unless it's causing some nasty clipping noise. So as you EQ with Nova GE or regular Nova, it's adjusting the overall loudness so that you can focus on what it actually sounds like and not making it louder or quieter, which I think is really great. Next, I'm going to jump into Fur Comp 2 and make maybe a couple adjustments to the compression. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. Okay, that's pretty much it. These are the settings that I usually use for voice, very fast attack time, a release of around 100 milliseconds, ratio of four, and then I just pull the threshold down until it sounds like it's compressing the peaks and not much else. Now, I'm also going to add some de-essing to this. And I'm going to show you how to do this with the free version of Fur Comp, which is called Fur Comp. So to turn this compressor into a de-esser, what I'm going to do is take the sidechain filter and push that up to de-ess, move the ratio up to infinity or even 10 to 1 would be okay, push the knee up to hard, turn the attack time down to zero, turn the release time down to like 5 milliseconds, and then turn down the program release dependency, enable look ahead, and then I'm going to adjust the threshold until I can see some compression happening only on the S sounds. So I'm going to find a phrase here that has a pretty strong S. I think this one does right here. So I'm just going to make a little selection, press R on the keyboard. You push because this is what you love. You push because this is what you love. You push because this is what you love. So that's pretty subtle. Let's hear what it sounds like without this compressor acting as a de-esser. You push because this is what you love. It's pretty subtle, but this S sound right here is, I would say, a good bit louder without the de-esser enabled. In fact, to show you that a little bit more clearly, I'm going to do the same thing with Fur Comp 2. And there's actually a preset here for de-essing, which applies a lot of those same settings. The high pass is set to 7 kilohertz, ratio of 30, attack time 0, release 5 milliseconds. And I'm just going to pull the threshold down to about there. You push because this is what you love. I'm going to turn on look ahead and I'm also going to click delta listen and this enables you to listen to only the thing that the compressor is compressing. So if I've set this up properly, you should only hear things like S's and harsh consonants sounds. If you pull the threshold down further, you're going to start to grab other parts that maybe you don't want. This is what you That's not necessarily a bad thing, but generally I try to get just the consonants. So somewhere around there, should do it. You push because this is what you love. And so with those settings, what you get is a nice, bright, crispy voiceover that is not too sibilant. You can do everything that I did with free plugins and you should definitely try it out. That helps to get this voiceover kind of leveled out and sounding a little bit better. I'm going to relock those so I don't move those inadvertently. And now let's address just what's happening between the voiceover and the music. You don't need to be pushed. 
pushing is what you do. So just this beginning section, the overall loudness is actually pretty good without the sound effects. I'm shooting for an overall loudness of this project for negative 14, and right now I'm in that neighborhood. But whenever the voiceover is happening with the music, the voiceover gets obscured a little bit. So what I could do is do a little bit of side chain compression. What that will do is push the music out of the way anytime the voiceover is happening. And let me show you how to do that. I'm going to grab this route button here, and I'm going to click and drag that over to the music track. What this does is it routes the audio from the voiceover to the music track. And I want to change the audio here. So it's coming from audio one and two, and I want to send it to new channels three and four. And then I'm going to close this routing box right here. I'm going to jump into the effects for this music track. And I'm going to apply the recomp effect, which is one of Reaper's stock compressors. I'm going to change the detector input to auxiliary inputs right there. And effectively what I've done is I've made this compressor only be able to react to the voiceover. So when I play this, what you will see is right here on the input level meter, it's only going to light up when the voiceover is happening. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. And so if I take the threshold and I drop that down to right around there, negative 24-ish, and I turn up the ratio, what you'll hear is the music gets pushed out of the way of the VO. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. This meter over here shows gain reduction. And right now the gain reduction is pretty aggressive in its timing, meaning it's happening very fast and it's releasing very fast. So to smooth this out, I like to set it up something like this. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. To go harder faster and overcome all obstacles you push because this is what you love you push whoops it actually jumped into my little time selection there and started to loop but i think you get the idea now instead of doing that what i could do is automate the volume by pressing v on the keyboard and just dip the volume down every time the voiceover is happening but using a sidechain compressor does almost the same thing and it does it really quickly. Now there is going to be a bit of an issue right here when the beat drops in this music because the level of the music comes up significantly. So where it sounds pretty good here, pushing is what you do to go harder. Here it's going to be a little bit probably too much. The music is going to be a little bit too loud. So to handle this, I would do some volume automation, and you could do that with the regular volume automation like this, and just drop two little points here and then pull this down just a little bit. Or you can use volume pre-effects, which essentially does the same thing except it's pre-effects. But the nice thing about this way of automating the volume with this envelope here is that it changes the waveform so that you can visually see how much you might need to drop the level by, by just kind of eyeballing the waveforms. So I'm just kind of looking at the overall level here and trying to match it here where the beat drops. I might want it a little bit louder. So something like that, I think that'll work. Let's see if that did the trick. What do you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. I think that worked pretty well. All right, so now let's check out what's happening in the sound effects and see how this is all kind of playing together. You don't need to be pushed. So the sound effects are a little bit too loud and they also probably need that same side chain compression treatment. So just like before, I'm going to grab the routing button from the VO track, pull it down to the sound effects track, select new channels, 
three and four right here. And to make things even easier, I can just grab this compressor and drag it over here, which will just copy that effect. It's set up the exact same way. And let's see if that made enough of a difference to push those sound effects out of the way of the VO just a little bit. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love. Hydro Water, fuel your passion. Not too bad, I would say that's pretty close. I could use maybe a touch more clarity from the voiceover, but maybe I can massage a few other things to make that happen. One of those things is moving around the voiceover items to get out of the way of the sound effects. So one thing that I was hearing was right here. Pushing is This loud scrapey sound here is competing a little bit with this line. And I think I can move this to the right a little bit to just give that sound effect a little bit more space. I also think that this sound effect here might be a little bit too loud. So I can just pull down the snowboard level by maybe two or three decibels and that may help. So let's hear that section. Pushing is what you do. Cool, I think that works. I also think these two media items right here happen a little close to the start of the video clips. In other words, the voiceover starts almost on top of the scene change. To go harder. And there's a little bit of space here, so I can actually move these to the right a little bit so that we kind of register what's happening on screen visually. We hear the sound effect and then we hear the audio cue. And I think I can move this one even more to the right. So let's see if that works. To go harder. Oh, looks like I have even more room to move this to the right. To go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push. I could probably do the same thing here too. If that kind of trails over into the snowmobile shot, that's not a big deal. Let's see if that works. To go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love. Hydro water, fuel your passion. That's pretty good. Now, you will have probably noticed that I didn't have the video window up while I was managing the levels of the first part of this. I did that on purpose. Sometimes it's actually good to make the video window go away or not look at the video so that you can focus on what it actually sounds like. Because believe it or not, your eyes can trick your brain into thinking that you are hearing something that you are not actually hearing. If you are looking at a picture of like the cars going around the corner in this drifting scene here, your brain will tell you you are hearing more of the engine noise and the tire squeal than you actually are because it's being reinforced visually. So that's a way that you can kind of focus on what things are sounding like. And I know it sounds very obvious, but just close the video window and focus on just the audio. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. The only thing that I'm hearing here is this last little bit of audio right here could maybe come up a little bit more. So I can probably do a little bit of volume automation right at the very end and bring this back up to zero decibels, something like that. You do is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love and overcome all obstacles. So I can't really hear the breath sounds so much on this runner. One thing I could do is 
take this running sound with the breath right here and just hit it with a little compression and just boost up the makeup gain. So maybe something like this. Like that. Let's see if that cuts through a little bit better. And overcome all obstacles. Mm, not really. Maybe a little bit more juice here. And overcome all obstacles. And overcome all obstacles. That's pretty close. It is clipping a little bit right here. In fact, at this point, I'm not sure we need as much uh, of this concrete footsteps sound. And overcome all obstacles. Probably need to increase the ratio there to really squish it. Let's see if that helps. And overcome all obstacles. Cool. Maybe just added a little bit too much makeup gain there. And overcome all obstacles. I could also just pull the music down a little bit there as well. You know, anytime you're not hearing one thing, it's helpful to maybe just make the other thing a little bit quieter. And to do that, I'm actually going to use the regular volume envelope. Uh, now that I have my music leveled out in this section and then uh, this kind of bigger beat drop section here, I can just make a small adjustment where that running clip is. So it's right here. And I'll put four little points in there by shift clicking and maybe just drop this down two decibels. It may, whoops, two decibels. It may not take a whole lot to get a little bit more clarity out of that running clip. Let's see. And overcome all obstacles. Cool. I just want to make sure that transition is nice and smooth there. So I'm just going to move this point over. I'm going to move this point over as well. Stop and overcome all obstacles. The more I pull the music down, the more of that running sound you will be able to hear. Stop. And overcome all obstacles. But I think maybe two or three decibels is probably sufficient. I could also maybe add a little bit more high frequency content to this, maybe a little bit more sizzle to help it cut more. A little bit more brightness can help it punch through the mix a little bit better. And overcome all obstacles. You I think that works. And at this point, I don't think we need any of this wind stuff here. So I'll just drop that down. And overcome all obstacles. Cool. To me, that's sounding much better, much more clear. You push because this is what you love. And I think actually, now that I've done that, I might be able to just drop the music overall a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my volume pre effects and just pull it down a hair more, maybe by that much. You do. To go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. And then I will pull it down just a little bit for this runner. by just a couple of decibels. Not much, maybe two more decibels. All obstacles you push. And I think the snowmobiler needs to come up a little bit more too. Let me find. So one of these needs to come up just a little bit. Maybe that guy right there. Or maybe just move this little section here so that it starts with a nice loud sound. That might work. And it sounds a little bit mid heavy. So I'm going to high pass this a little bit, maybe pull out this much of that low mid content. You push. Yep, I think that was okay. You push because this is what you love. I'm not getting a whole bunch from that water sound. So I think. I can maybe punch this up a little bit more. I'll put this back at zero. I'll just reset that volume there. And I'll do a little volume automation to kind of pull it down towards the end. Because if you recall, this shot starts tight and then gets wider. So I can kind of reinforce that with a little volume automation there. Hydro. 
And then finally, we have this nice big boom sound happening, but the music is kind of still in the way of that. So I'm going to hide my volume pre effects and maybe just dip down the level of the music for that boom just to kind of make a little bit of room for it. Uh, something like that. Maybe just a little bit, couple decibels ought to do it. Hydro water, fuel your passion. I think that works pretty well. The other thing that you can do is do a little EQ automation. So I could do something like re EQ, delete almost all the bands, set this to a actually high pass, set it all the way down, jump into the envelopes here and enable right here, frequency high pass. And then right when that boom happens, which you can see right here in the track folder for the sound effects, I'm going to take that high pass, whoops, and I will zoom in right here. I got to set the edit cursor there. Sometimes that trips me up. And then I'll just raise this high pass up to something like, I don't know, 150 hertz. And then I'll pull it back down here so that it comes back down. Essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to momentarily cut some of the bass out of the music to make room for the bass in the sound effects. Let's see if that works. Hydro water, fuel your passion. Good. Uh, I think I'll just adjust the curve like that. Hydro water, fuel your passion. Hydro water, fuel your passion. That's great. So, overall, I'm feeling pretty good about this mix. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do to go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. If anything, I think maybe. I need to pull the threshold down on this sidechain compression and possibly this sidechain compressor just a little bit to get a little bit more clarity from that VO. The beginning's good, but then it gets pretty loud in this back half. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. To go harder, faster. And I think tightening up the release time on the sound effects will help it to come back a little bit faster. And I might have overdid it with the threshold, so I'm going to roll that back just a skosh. You don't need to be pushed. Pushing is what you do. To go harder, faster, and overcome all obstacles. You push because this is what you love. Hydro water, fuel your passion. Cool, not bad. And then I think at the end here, I could maybe bring the music up just a touch. Um, so I'm going to hop back to my volume pre effects and just bump this up a little bit as it goes into the fade out here. Seems uh, a little weird here, but I just want the music to come back up after it's been down for a little bit. So something like this, maybe. Water, fuel your passion. Cool. I think that's a pretty good spot to leave it for now. My overall loudness looks pretty good here on my loudness meter. In fact, if I wanted to double triple check, I could open up the actions list, search for loudness, and then run this action right here, which is calculate loudness of master mix via dry run render. Cool. Negative 15 here, negative 1.7 on my true peak. My target was negative 14. I'm like one decibel shy of that. That's totally cool with me. And that's it for this lesson. Wow, that was a lot. 
If you made it this far, congratulations. You know, looking back on the course now, it was a lot of fiddling with sound effects and moving things back and forth and doing things that, honestly, were not terribly exciting. But if you followed along, you should now have some super solid skills that you can use to build out immersive sound design projects of your own. And that is pretty great. Throughout the course, you saw me use premium third-party sound effects like Nova GE and FurComp 2. And I just want to say again, for the 10th time, that you don't need to get the premium versions of these effects to do what I did in this course. Get the free versions, and if you like them, support the developers by buying the premium versions. There are several things that make the premium versions of these effects better and super useful, but start with the free versions first. Even though this course was over two and a half hours long, I really only scratched the surface of sound design. And that's good because that means there's a lot left for you to explore. Topics like using reverb, delays, glitch effects, synthesizers, and more. And if you're interested in exploring topics like those, along with tons of great video on editing, motion design, graphic design, and more, get subscribed to Envato Tuts Plus. And if you want access to millions of digital assets for one low price, check out Envato Elements. With Envato Elements, you get access to stock footage, motion graphics templates, music, sound effects, photos, vector graphics, fonts, and so much more. A single subscription gives you access to everything you need to create great projects. See for yourself at elements.envato.com. Dot com. Thanks again for watching this course. Let me know what you thought about the course down in the comments. And if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. My name is Dave Bodie for Envato, and I'll see you around.